Hey guys, so we have a 6th degree polynomial from x to the 6th all the way to f. We have 6 initial values, so theoretically we could make a system of 6 equations, 6 variables, work that out and finally get our a through f, and then we can plug in our f of 4. But instead of that, we're going to do something that's used in abstract algebra and in problems like these. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function g of x, set that equal to this original f of x, plus another h of x. Now you might be asking what help does this give us? We've just created two more functions. Instead of one function we don't know, we have three functions we don't know. But the reasoning behind this is what g of x is actually, we are going to make the initial values, the inputs of the initial values in f, those are going to be the roots for g of x. So in other words, we'll have g of 1 equals g of 3 equals all the way to g of 11 they will all be zero for this g of x. Now how do we get that? Well, that all depends on this h of x, h of x function, right? Because we're adding h of x to this f of x. So what we need for this h of x is that for each of these inputs 1 through 11, we need, we need for those initial values only for h of x to spit out an output equivalent to these outputs for f. And then we can subtract that. So actually I'll write f of x minus h of x so that when we, put, we replace this h of x with a function we find, we will subtract the exact outputs that we get and we'll get zero for those initial values. So we do need to find a pattern first. So f of one is negative two, this is negative one times two, f of three is four, this is one times four, f of five is 18, which is three times six, f of seven is 40, which is five times eight, f of nine is 70, or 7 times 10, f of 11 is 108, which is 9 times 12. So what we see here is that when we have an n, our output will be in the form n minus 2 times n plus 1. So we have an idea for h of x. Our h of x could be x minus 2 times x plus 1, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this h of x and we're going to put it in. But first, let's observe something real quick. f of x is a sixth degree polynomial. h of x, well this will be a second degree polynomial. So this confirms that g of x will be a sixth degree polynomial and these will be the only roots of g of x. With that in mind, let's go ahead. We will have g of x is equal to f of x minus x minus 2 times x plus 1. Now notice something. Now that we have subtracted this x minus 2 times x plus 1, this is technically equivalent to a factored form because if we plug the roots in, we'll get 0. Knowing that, we can set this equal to the factored form of g of x, which would be these roots. So that's x minus 1, x minus 3, x minus 5, x minus 7, x minus 9, all the way to x minus 11. So we can ignore this g of x now, and we can isolate f of x. f of x is equal to x minus 1 times x minus 3 all the way to x minus 11 plus this x minus 2 times x plus 1. All we have left is just to find f of 4. We can do that by doing f of 4 equals 3 times 1 times negative 1, times negative 3, times negative 5, times negative 7, plus 2, times 5. This is equal to uh, 105, 3, 315, plus 10 is equal to 325. 